Hi guys, Tony Dubs here, and today I'm doing a video review on the Brainwaves Alara. Now these are planar magnetic headphones, almost lost my words there, for around £390 in the UK. So be sure to check out um, Brainwaves website uh, for other pricing uh, details. Now, these headphones were rather interesting, not only because it's one of um, Brainwaves' first planar magnetic headphones, but it's also one of their most expensive set of audio products, period. They usually produ uh, produce pretty cheap but very affordable and yet very well performing um, gear. So it's very much intriguing to see how this would compare. Now within the box um, you've got a nice little hard shell carrying case uh, and then you'll find um, extra uh, pads uh, which are included, a little strap which you can use it to take on the go and a, a quarter inch jack. Uh, other than that, uh, in terms of the case itself, it looks pretty nice and it's got a little place over here so you can store the cable or the adapters or what have you. Now in terms of the actual headphones themselves, um, they look, well, pretty good. I've got no complaints, they're all black sort of design, uh, so those people who like a wooden design, like from an order Z type of design, might be a little bit disappointed. It's made of a full mit uh, metallic sort of construction, obviously not the, um, the, the actual padding of the headband, but within the headband it's all metal, which means that it's great in terms of longevity, you can actually um, feel that they're quite robust, even when you pick them up, let alone if you were to accidentally drop them, but um, nevertheless, it is just, uh, it does add a little bit of extra weight to your head. In other words, when you do put them on, and right and left indicators, by the way, are over here, um, you might feel a little bit of weight on your head. Now, don't get me wrong, this is nowhere near the sort of level of weight that you'd expect from all the Z headphones. At the LCD range, they're really heavy, at least to, to, my, to my head. I feel that they're, even with their suspended design, they feel like they, they add a lot of weight to your head. Um, and these are somewhat in between this and the Hi-Fi Man Sandara, which to me are one of the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn. Like, Ever. I, I haven't even come across um, headphones in terms of flagship headphones that really compete in terms of how comfortable these are. These feel like they're literally floating on your head, um, whereas uh, the Alara might feel a little bit of extra weight. Now weight aside, uh, in terms of the headband assembly, I've got no complaints. However, this might concern people who have smaller heads. Now I consider myself to have a medium sized head. The reason I say that is because on most headphones I would adjust it to one or three, uh, two to three clicks from the from the minimum minimum points that you can have whereas these I had to use them on the absolute minimum as you can see they're on the absolute minimum and they just fit on my head as if I adjust it a little bit more it'll be um, too um, too far out and also uh, will feel like it's kind of drooping on top of my um, ear especially with that added little weight it does make a massive difference so the reason I'm mentioning this is because if you have a smaller sized head you might struggle to actually wear these headphones and actually get the best sort of um, sonic reproduction from them simply because of um, their headband. Other than that, the headband assembly is decent. There is, as I said, um, minimal adjustment, uh, even in terms of the most exterior one. It's not exactly that big. It's, it's still pretty small, uh, if you ask me. So I think um, uh, brainwaves are kind of like make this ergonomically a little bit awkward, at least if you've got a really large sized head or a very small head or a smaller sized head, I think you might struggle to wear these comfortably. Um, but in terms of comfort wise, I have no complaints um, other than the headband, obviously it fits me but it might not fit you. Um, the, the pads themselves are nice and soft, uh, they sit around the ear, they don't get really warm even over long periods of listening or, or gaming. Um, the top of the headband has a nice sort of padding as well, so it doesn't sort of feel that it's digging into the top of your head. Uh, the cables themselves are removable, so it's got a um, 3.5mm jack with two poles which, which go in on left and right, uh, and then you've got a sort of mesh braided slash cable which is terminated by a straight 3.5 millimeter gold jack. Um, no complaints. Again, it's to be expected, and the jack itself is relatively, relatively big and relatively well made. Um, so you can expect it to be uh, resilient over time, especially if you're plugging into an amp or, or DAC. Um, the cable itself is two meters long, which to me is absolutely perfect for a desktop use. This is not made for mobile use, uh, as in like using them with your mobile or, or walking around. Uh, but nevertheless, um, it's a two meter cable. Now, aside design. In terms of isolation, it's something that you should bear in mind. These are open back headphones, even though they've got like sort of a mesh sort of design over here. 
they are open back headphones, however, they don't, um, uh, they, they isolate a little bit better than the Sandara, which to me are completely open back, as you can see there's no sort of thing hiding between the driver and the mesh, um, here you've got that sort of meta metallic construction around it. So these isolate slightly better than Sandara um, and the likes of like let's say HD800. Um, I know it's not really in comparison to, but some people might have heard those headphones um, and therefore you can sort of allude to them. However, they're not going to isolate anywhere near as good as closed back headphones. Uh, so just bear that in mind. If you if you live in a busy environment, um, then you might want to consider a closed back alternative. Um, but nevertheless, these are open back headphones. I just thought to point it out. Now, um, other than that, in terms of design comfort, build quality, um, and just the overall sort of accessories that you got, no complaints. I, I can't really complain too much, especially in terms of my own personal experience. Now, moving on from that, let's talk about sound quality. And this is very intriguing because I was, I, I, I was not torn between the Sundara and, and the Alara, but um, and they kind of sound the same, but. Um, I was very much comparing them to the Sundara. Now there are other headphones out there, there's a bunch I'll add in the description from um, dynamic drivers such as uh, Grado and Sennheiser to uh, Planner Magnetic from Audazee, Monoprice um, and Hi-Fi Man themselves. They all come in at under £400, you can find them you know, pretty affordable headphones out there, Planner Magnetic technology as well, uh, which differs from dynamic drivers. I suggest you guys look that up and I'll, I'll be sure to add a link in the description if you want to have some sort of further reading in terms of what those drivers actually mean or what's the benefits or disadvantages of them. Now, um, in terms of sound quality, before I go into that, I want to talk about it being driven. Now, on the Cord Yugo 2, which is the DAC I actually used at, um, at home, I had no problems driving these at all, and of course that DAC can power any sort of headphones to be honest, but I had to add extra notches when I was listening to the Sundara, so just bear that in mind that uh, you don't really need to drive these as such, they're pretty easy to drive, um, even from a smartphone, uh, believe it or not, uh, you'll be able to drive these uh, with ease. Uh, now in terms of the sound quality, it's actually quite interesting because to me, I always want a sort of open back sounding headphone, but has a little bit of a punch and warmth to it. More of like a, not a V-shaped sound signature, but more of a warmer, fun sound signature than rather neutral, boring sound signature that some people might describe. And the Alara, in this respect, does a fantastic job. It's got a sort of LCD 2, LCD 3 warmth to it. It's got this warm, soft, mid bass that you, you, you'll you enjoy if you're listening to uh, music that has a lot of bass in it. Uh, but yet, it doesn't compromise on the quality of the mids, they're not pushed back to, too much. They are obviously a little bit recessed, a little bit veiled, but they're not to the point that you're like, oh, these are just warm sounding, V-shaped sounding headphones, far from it. The, the mids are just not as forward as you'd expect from something like the Sundara or uh, HD uh, HD six hundred S, for example, or it's not very mid centric. It's more of a, a balanced, uh, warm sounding tone. And to me, when it comes to my listening, when it comes to R and B dance music, um, to me these headphones actually sound really nice and kind of remind me of my closed back Denon headphones. Um, and you know, I really enjoyed the sort of sound signature. So in terms of the sub bass, it extends relatively well. Uh, better than most open back headphones I've actually come across, especially at this sort of price range, uh, which pretty much have a non-existent sub-bass response. Um, there is a nice sub-bass extension, however, it's not going to compare to a closed back alternative, which costs around £400. So for example, my discontinued uh, custom Denon D2000s with D5000 cups and what have you, uh, which pretty much is not a D2000 anymore, but those headphones, as an example, give you a much warmer and um, a deeper uh, sub-bass reproduction than, than these will ever do. In terms of mid-bass, yet again, it is very nice, it's punchy, um, it, it's, it has more sort of uh, quantity over the Sundara, uh, but in terms of quality, I felt that the Sundara had a, a, a one-up on it. It had a sort of clean sort of uh, reproduction in the mid-bass, whereas the Alara um, felt a little bit wobbly at times, but on the whole I can't complain too much, but if I'm comparing like for like, I would have you know, said if you want um, a quality over quantity, the, the Sundara wins over the Alara. In terms of mids, as I described, a little bit recessed, a little bit, little bit veiled. However, 
very much accurate, no problems whatsoever, no sort of artificial type of boosting either, it sounds really nice. The highs extend really well, um, they're not sibilant uh, to be quite honest with you, they, 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 they go up all the way uh, as you'd expect in the high end frequencies and give you that sort of sparkle, that energy that you like. In terms of sound stage, I must say these produce a very nice sound stage. Coming from closed back headphones, I think you'll notice a massive difference. Um, it sounds a lot wider and of course being open back headphones, um, they have a lot of more airiness. However, again, compared to the Sandara, the Sandara has a much wider, much more open sound, um, not only because of its driver design and in terms of its mesh look, but just simply because of how it does, uh, how it deals with sort of like the tone and the, the instrument separation. The Alara is very, very good at that. However, when I compared it to the Sandara, uh, I preferred what Hi-Fi Mine had done with, with the soundstage that it felt more involving and when I was gaming I heard positional cues a little bit better with, with that. But then coming to these, I really enjoyed it, I still really enjoyed it and going to closed back headphones, I kind of lost that, that sense of openness that I got with these the Alara headphones. So the soundstage is good, it's not excellent but it is actually very good. So overall what do I think of these headphones? Well quite simply put, I think they're fantastic. I mean. What I was comparing it to, the Sandara, are around 450 to 500 pounds, um, so it is a little bit of extra premium. It's up to you guys to really decide what you want, but to me, what Brainwaves have done over here is produce an actual headphone that competes with the rest of the market and has its own sort of place in the market. It's not just another headphone. It's a warmer sounding Sundara with one which has a little bit of more mid bass uh, quantity and a little bit of a better sub bass extension. But if you're someone who wants that open back airiness sound and wants something that's a little bit more mid centric than it would have a more of a mid bass presence, the Sundara will win it for me. And between the two, you're talking about 60 pounds. And at this price range, the 60 pounds matter a lot. You know, if you're looking for something under 500 pounds, well, no. So it really depends up to you as to which one you'd prefer. Um, personally, I ended up going all the, all the time back to these, and also in terms of their comfort, I actually really love them. Um, not to say these were bad, it's just that I preferred the, the sort of floating headphones on, on my head. So overall, I can definitely recommend them. They've got a place in the market. If you've got any questions, make sure you ask me down in the comments below. I'll be sure to respond. Uh, check out the links in the description. You'll see the links to uh, the Brainwaves website and all the com competitors that I mentioned and what kind of alluded to as well, uh, because model names can get quite uh, bogged down in the video. If you like this review, make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe, uh, favorite, and share, all that good stuff.